Hello and welcome to the Uthelmo channel. Chemical engineers need to fit the parameters of thermodynamic models very often. In this video, we are going to show you how to use the XS COS package to fit the binary interaction parameter of the Pengu Robinson equation of state. To do that, we will use experimental vapor liquid equilibrium data for the mixture ethane, hydrogen sulfide measured at constant temperature. The objective function that we will apply in order to minimize the deviations between experimental and calculated results is the summation of the squared relative deviations in pressure. This calculation is subject to constraints which have to do with the fact that the calculated values should satisfy the vapor-liquid equilibrium conditions for both ethane and hydrogen sulfide. In this way, what we have for each of these compounds is that the difference between the logarithm of the fugacity in the vapor and liquid phases should be equal to zero. Further, what we have is that the logarithm of the fugacity is equal to the summation of the logarithm of the mole fraction plus the logarithm of the fugacity coefficient plus the logarithm of pressure. When we combine these formulas, the logarithm of the pressure cancels out. We have an equation like this for each component at each experimental data point, giving a total of Nx times Nc equality constraints in our optimization problem. The unknowns in this problem will be the pressure at each point, the mole fractions in the vapor phase, and the binary interaction parameter K12 of the Pink Robinson equation of state, noting that the K12 and K21 parameters are equal in this model. Before using the excess COS package in the Excel environment, it's necessary to take a look at the scale of the variables. The pressure is of the order of 10 to the power 5 or to the power 6 in Pascal. The mole fractions in the vapor phase are between 0 and 1, and the binary interaction parameter of the Peng Robinson model is a number close to 0, typically in the range from 0 to 1. What we will do is to rescale the pressure before we apply Excel solver, and in addition, we'll discuss how to deal with mole fractions in a binary mixture. The source of the experimental data appears on the slide where we also have the value of the universal gas constant, properties that characterize ethane and hydrogen sulfide, namely the critical temperature, critical pressure, eccentric factor, and binary interaction parameters. And the cell with the blue background is an estimate for the binary interaction parameter. The cell across it follows its value because one of them is K12, the other one is K21, and they should be equal at all times. In addition, we have the temperature in Fahrenheit, which converted to Kelvin is equal to 283.71. We have the experimental compositions, phase compositions, and pressure in English units. And next column is the pressure converted to Pascal. In what follows, we have the initial estimates for the calculated mole fractions in the vapor phase. Here, we'll take a break to have some discussion. First, observe that the initial estimates adopted for Y1 and Y2 are equal to their experimental counterparts. In addition, observe that these initial estimates with blue background are all smaller than 0.5. The reason for this choice is that Excel solver tends to work better by using the smallest mole fraction as unknown when you have a binary mixture. The missing cells with white background in the Y1 and Y2 columns can be calculated as equal to 1 minus the initial estimated available in the cells with blue background. Next, we move to the discussion of pressure. And here again, we take a break for some discussion. The pressure is of the order of 10 to the power 5 
or 10 to the power 6 Pascal, numbers that are vastly different from the mole fractions and binary interaction parameters. To avoid having such discrepancy, what we do is to define a pressure factor whose initial value is equal to 1. The strategy will be to calculate the pressure as the experimental pressure times the pressure factor at each condition. In principle, in the end, we expect that the pressure factor is a number close to 1. And in this way, all the unknowns, the binary interaction parameter, the mole fractions, and the pressure factors will be numbers typically in the range from 0 to 1. We will now calculate the properties of the liquid phase, beginning with the logarithm of the mole fraction of the experimental mole fraction of component 1. Now we drag laterally and double click, and we have the values for the whole series. Next, we mark two cells which will have the values of the logarithm of the gas coefficient in the liquid phase. It's calculated using the function PR len phi L, whose first parameter is universal gas constant, locked with F4, followed by the absolute temperature in Kelvin, locked with F4, then the calculated pressure value, followed by the mole fraction in the liquid phase for components 1 and 2, and the last parameter is the set of constants that characterize the mixture of ethane and hydrogen sulfide locked with F4. We then press Ctrl, Shift, Enter, obtain the values, and double click to obtain the value for the values for the whole series. We now calculate the summation of ln of x1 plus ln of phi1, drag laterally for component 2, and double click for the whole series, completing the calculation of the properties of the liquid phase. We now repeat the whole process for the vapor phase, beginning with the logarithm of the mole fractions in the vapor phase, the calculated values, component 1, now component 2, and for the whole series. Again, the calculations of gas coefficients, the logarithms, marking two cells, this time with the function PR, len phi V for the vapor phase. The arguments will be the same, the first of them being the universal gas constant, locked with F4, followed by the absolute temperature in Kelvin, also locked with F4, then the calculated pressure, followed by the calculated mole fractions in the vapor phase, and the parameter set locked with F4. Ctrl, Shift, Enter, double click, we have for the whole series. Now we go for the logarithm of the mole fraction of the vapor phase plus the logarithm of the few gas coefficient of components 1 and 2 over all points. And we now go for the phase equilibrium condition of component 1, len x plus len phi, and we subtract these from the same values for the vapor phase, component 1, component 2, and we have the phase equilibrium condition over the whole data series, and we see it's not satisfied because these entries are not zero. Now we calculate the relative deviation in pressure as being the calculated pressure minus the experimental pressure, this difference divided by the, calculate, by the experimental pressure, and this result is squared. For all data points and the summation over all the data points to give our objective function, which is zero because our initial pressure estimate is equal to the experimental values. We now use solver 
And our goal is to minimize the objective function by changing the binary interaction parameter, the Y1 or Y2 values, those with blue background, and the pressure factors. This calculation is subject to equality constraints that represent the phase equilibrium conditions for ethane and hydrogen sulfide at each experimental data point. Our problem is now ready to run, and to do that, we will press solve and the numerical solution of this problem, it's not a small problem, takes some time. What we will observe on the bottom left side of the screen is the progress of the objective function. And what we will see is that it initially increases what seems to be counterintuitive because we expect to decrease the objective function. However, remember, this is a problem with constraints, and the constraints were not satisfied with our, by our initial estimates of the binary interaction parameter, the mole fractions, and the pressure factors. It's only after some time that the objective function starts to decrease. It's still increasing at this point. It has now started to decrease. And it will continuously decrease until Solver finds the solution. Okay, it found the solution. Observe that the phase equilibrium conditions are now, now satisfied at all points. See, all of them equal to zero. We can check the value of the binary interaction parameter we found, 0 0.08. And let's take a look at the plot where the points are the experimental values and the lines are the calculated values. We see that there is very good agreement. There is also very good agreement for the binary interaction parameter. The literature refers to 0 0.08 and our calculations indicated the same value. Let me thank you for watching this presentation and also let me invite you to subscribe to the Uthelmo channel and visit our Facebook page. My name is Marcelo Castier. Thanks again and bye for now.